Good morning, a very warm welcome to you. It is a great delight to be here this morning. If you were wondering why I skipped in late there, I first have to thank Jesse for choosing a long entrance process hymn this morning, because while I was standing at the back, I realized I didn't have my glasses, which means going back to the office, which was locked, which means finding Steve <laughs> and praying that the hymn was going to go on and on, or it was all going to start very quietly. It worked. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> this morning we're going to look at uh, the scriptures beginning with uh, Jeremiah. The lot of a prophet, as we read, is not a happy one. In fact, even Jesus wrote about uh, having a hard time in his hometown as a prophet. Prophets bring news and brought news that people often don't want to hear. The Old Testament reading today from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, often described as a weeping prophet, such was the anguish he felt when people would not listen to the word of the Lord. In words echoing the psalm from today, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Like Moses, Jeremiah's response to God's call on his life was less than enthusiastic. I don't know how to speak, Lord. I, I'm only a child. But the words God wants spoken are not the childish words of Jeremiah, but the words that God will give him to speak. God reached out and touched Jeremiah's mouth and appointed him to speak. In today's reading, the Lord takes Jeremiah to the potter's house, and there he said, I will let you hear my words. I find it interesting that God reveals his word to Jeremiah by showing him something, in this case, the potter working at the wheel. Through the hands of the potter, God reveals something of his own character. God speaks his living word through a potter, as he will do through a fisherman and a carpenter. Jeremiah looks at the potter on the wheel, and the potter works the clay, wetting it, shaping it gently but firmly, creating from the dust a vessel that seems good to him, maybe with a special purpose in mind, a mug or a jug or something for the temple. But things go wrong. If you've ever worked at a potter's wheel, you know that perhaps especially for beginners, it's very disheartening when you've got that pot centered and everything's going great, and somehow it suddenly swerves off center and it's a real mess. It's a painful process as you scrape it off the wheel and you smack it back onto the board and punch it into shape to get the air bubbles in and start all over again. That's the image that God is giving us. It's a little painful, is it not? But this is what Jeremiah sees and hears from God. God has formed and shaped Israel just as he formed and shaped Jeremiah from dust in the womb, knit together, made in secret, woven in the depths of the earth, as the psalmist wrote, marvelously made for God's purpose, marvelously made, the child, the prophet, the nation. Life may be snatched away from us, but for those of us granted this gift, we have a choice to make, to submit to the hands of the potter, or to turn away. And this is the center of our faith. This is the tenet. We come back to it again and again throughout scripture. God calling his children, his creation. But our propensity to sin, a little step here, a little step there, what harm will it do, can take us a long way off. But never so far that God's voice cannot reach us if we will choose to hear. In the passage from Jeremiah, God is speaking to a nation, to a people. The prophet speaks the word of God's warning and bitterly laments when those words go unheeded. God says, can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation turns from evil, I will change my mind. There are several instances in scripture where God appears to change his mind. 
Jonah, you may remember, was another reluctant prophet sent by God to warn the people of Nineveh to turn from their wicked ways. And Jonah chooses to run in the opposite direction. But as the, farm, as the psalmist reminds us, it's futile to run. Where can I flee from your presence? Jonah finds out nowhere. Dripping with plankton and seaweed, there is nowhere to hide from God's love, neither height nor depth nor the stomach of a whale. Now Nineveh did respond to God's warning and did repent, but Israel did not. Verse 12 is missed from our reading today. I think it's an important verse and a heartbreaking one. God says, so turn, turn from your evil ways, each one of you. But he already knows what the response is going to be. It's no use. We will continue our own plans. Or as the Jerusalem Bible says, what is the use of talking? We prefer to do as we please. God the Potter forms and fashions us as it pleases him. But we, the work of his hands, the love of his heart, prefer to do as we please. The people of Judah did as they pleased. And Babylon besieged them, the temple and Jerusalem was destroyed, leaders were executed, people taken into exile. No wonder Jeremiah wept. Scripture can be hard sometimes, challenging, however you understand the consequences of the disobedience of the sin. We're reminded again that there are consequences. Our Lord Jesus stepped into the gap and took our sin upon himself, but we are called. When we take the name of Christ, we are called to be a holy people set apart, to live differently. We are called to stand up for justice. We are called to hear God's voice on our lives. The words of the gospel are hard words to hear. You see, there isn't room for a kind of a half-hearted, it doesn't really matter, as long as we're all nice to each other. My friends, it matters, it matters, it matters. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. We have to make a decision. We know what our Lord did with lukewarm churches. It spat them out. The writer makes a point in the gospel reading in the strongest possible words. Our Lord uses words so strong that we stand up to listen. Talks about families, hating, father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, and even life itself. They're extreme words to gain our attention. Although, come to think of it, families can be the most difficult when it comes to sharing our faith and living out our ministry. Even Jesus encountered resistance from his family. They were inclined to think he was perhaps a little crazy. Just come home with us. Be quiet. It's all a bit embarrassing. The over-exaggerated point being made is that to be a disciple of Christ, we are called to be willing to give up our closely guarded, careful securities, those things that we have to have in our lives that we couldn't possibly live without. You know what they are. Is God at the top? For each of us, it's something different. And please hear me. I am not saying that we have to turn our backs on our families, on our responsibilities as parent, spouse, child. Indeed, it may be that our family is exactly where our Lord wants us to be, to work out his plans for us. What is required of us is a willingness to lay down our own plans to submit to the hands of the master potter who knows better than us what is good for us. And Psalm 139 reminds us, for you, Lord, created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you for I am marvelously made. Now I wanna ask you, when you look in the mirror, do you say, thank you, Lord, I am marvelously made. Are those the first words that come when you look at yourself in the mirror? They're not the first words that often come from me. I am marvelously made. I don't think God's too worried about our waistlines and all the other things that we fret about. 
Do you know that you are marvelously made? There's another verse in scripture from Isaiah, God the potter. But now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. We are the marvelous works of his hand. With that comes a call on our lives, not something to be taken lightly and not easily. This week I was lent a book by a friend. Christine Kane wrote it. It's called Unashamed, available from your local Warrington library. She went, Christine was uh, brought up in Australia. She uh, from in a Greek family. And she talks about how excited she was on the first day of kindergarten when she went with her hair all braided and her lunch pack, a new pink lunch pack, and there she's sitting with her friends, and she's so excited about it all. But a couple of little boys, when she starts eating her sandwich, start saying, oh, what's that? It stinks. She was eating a sandwich made of feta cheese. <coughs> and then they start the racial insults. She's a Greek, and they start to call her names and insults. And she doesn't know how to respond. So she just withdraws, hoping someone will stand up for her, and they don't. And so she thinks first she'll try to fit in, and then she decides she's going to be the best at everything. She's going to be the leader, the leader in sports, the leader in her classes. And so it goes on. Until one day, God, she hears his voice, and she begins the slow turning back. She now heads up an organization that works with women and children who are trafficked, and they live in, in uh, Southern California. But you see, part of the problem, I think, maybe, is that she didn't have those words, you are marvelously made, playing in her head. She, like so many, unfortunately, women, had suffered sexual abuse and continued to suffer it throughout her childhood. God is in the work of healing, is in the work of healing. What you and I may have had in our lives does not have to dictate how we live our lives. God is in the work of healing, and it often doesn't happen immediately, and it takes a long time, and the book is in part about that. But what a difference she is making in people's lives now. And also, she tells about her own daughter when she started school. Her own daughter went running off to school, and uh, something happened, and again, I, I'm not sure why it's the boys. Man, you need to speak to the boys here. <laughs> Who said, oh, you're just a dumb girl. But this young lady had been taught that she was marvelously made. And so this five-year-old said, I am not. My daddy tells me I'm intelligent and I'm beautiful. She doesn't say marvelously made. But do you hear the words, the words of the father? You are marvelously made. You are not dumb. You can do anything if I'm working in you. Don't listen to the voices that say, oh, you can't do it. You'll never amount to anything. Or all those other negative, you are God's child, formed and framed by God. Whatever our childhoods, and I know of what I speak. Responding to God's word in our own lives and in our lives, we can make the difference. That child going to school and saying, I'm smart, I'm intelligent, I'm beautiful, my daddy tells me, changes, changes the cycle. Today we are warned there's a cost to discipleship, as it was and is this day. On this new day, you and I are called, once again, to come before God, to offer him our lives, our plans. What would you have me do, Lord? Where would you lead me? Maybe where you are is exactly where he wants you to be. Or maybe there's something he wants you to put down or to pick up. Are you spending time with him, reading scripture in prayer and listening for his word? God is a God of grace who longs to speak to us. Sometimes we'll hear that word in the music or in a song. A little while ago, I came across a, a song, it's a Celtic song, and it's one of those songs that just seems to be forever playing in my head. You know, the kind, even when you wake up in the middle of the night, somehow this song will be playing. I want to read you a few of the words from it. It's written by Robin Mark. He wrote, when it's all been said and done, 
There is just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness, that you found purest gold in miry clay, turning sinners into saints. God is speaking to us today. Will we listen? 